Okay, we're going to talk about small lung, small cell lung cancer uh, in, in a sense. And, Doctor, I know we usually start with a doctor, but I'm going to start with Montessa because she has such a compelling story to tell, and then we'll come back with you if it's okay. Great. Montessa, can you give us a synopsis version of your understanding or interaction with small cell lung cancer? Yes, my interaction was, of course, I was diagnosed at the age of 28 with small cell lung cancer. And um, unfortunately, I came to learn more about small cell lung cancer initially through Google Doctor uh, and saw how deadly the disease was and how the needle hadn't changed after I was after they found a 15 centimeter mass in my chest, the tumor the size of a cantaloupe. And the biopsy would originally, I mean, initially reveal that it was small cell lung cancer after two misdiagnoses. That is incredible. Dr. Uh, Owen, how could that be possible that, that something like this was not detected early in her? In her? Because I understand that she had had several misdiagnoses before that. Yeah, so that uh, brings up two really important points. So the first is the misconception that only smokers get lung cancer. Um, you know, as Montessa was a non-smoker, it clearly wasn't on the differential diagnosis of the physicians that were treating her. Uh, and the second is the importance of screening. Um, these tumors can grow very fast, very quickly, and unless they're pushing against a rib or a nerve or compressing an airway, uh, patients can be entirely asymptomatic. And so that's why it's really important that we utilize the screening that has been approved in, in this country now for over a decade uh, the current recommendations for screening population is patients uh, who are 50 years or older, who currently smoke or recently quit smoking, should get a screening test. It's a simple CAT scan. It's non-invasive. Uh, it, it doesn't involve any prep, and it has been shown to diagnose cancers at an earlier stage when they're easy to treat and more likely to cure. You've just recently returned from the World Lung Cancer Conference. I know there had to be some exciting research and information going on. What did you learn? Yeah, it's a really exciting time for patients with small cell lung cancer and for research in small cell lung cancer. So we have more treatments approved just in the last few years than we've had for the last few decades. Uh, the treatment that Montessa received had been the same if she had been diagnosed 10, 15, 20 years before. And that's totally different now because of clinical research and clinical trials that have been done. At World Lung Can Cancer Conference, we're learning of specific subtypes of small cell lung cancer, that it's not just one disease, that there are different subtypes, different biology, and that those might yield different targets with more effective treatment options. So it really is an exciting time with the research uh, that's being done in small cell lung cancer. How is, what are the innovations and technology are you seeing for people? I want to give them some hope in case someone's listening and maybe going down the same path. What kind of innovations in technology have helped you guys to deal with this in patients? Yeah, so the biggest breakthrough in recent years has been in immune therapy. Uh, so immune therapy works very differently than chemotherapy. Cancer cells can sometimes camouflage themselves from the immune system, making them invisible to the immune system so the immune system doesn't engage them. These new immune therapies remove the camouflage, allow the immune system to see through the camouflage so that those immune cells can target and destroy cancer cells. And when that happens, that leads to a much longer lasting response than just chemotherapy, and is also less toxic than chemotherapy because it's working with the body's own immune system. And the most recent breakthroughs that we're hearing about are more advanced types of immune therapies using specific targets to bring the cancer and the immune system into contact to really enhance the effect of these immune therapies. And finally, Dr. Owen, how important are clinical trials, and how are there going on, any going on right now? Yeah, that's a really important question, and thanks for asking it. So what we like to say is with clinical trials, we're testing tomorrow's treatments today. Uh, clinical trials is how we determine whether a treatment is, is uh, safe and effective, uh, and it's how we bring treatments so that um, you know, they eventually can be approved for patients uh, outside of the clinical trial. I think there's some misconceptions about clinical trials. Um, one is that they're not safe. You know, all clinical trials, all clinical research is, is highly regulated and, and monitored to make sure that safety is our top priority. And the second misconception is that there might be a placebo or a sugar pill or that a patient might not get treated. With our small cell lung cancer studies, and there are dozens available at, at cancer centers across the country, uh, perhaps even hundreds, um, really what all of our patients are receiving an investigational or research agent that we're trying to test to see if it's better than what's currently available, or at least the standard of care. 
Uh, and in some cases, a clinical trial may be the best treatment option for a specific patient and is recommended by our NCCN um, uh, panel of recommend recommendations for cancer, for small cell lung cancer. So I really would encourage patients to talk to their doctors about whether a clinical trial could be right for them and make sure that they understand what's involved. Dr. Owens, you are probably an oncologist that your patients love you very much, so thank you for stopping by the Valder BB Show. And Montessa, I'm so glad you're here to tell your story. Thanks for being my guest, both of you. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe. I broadcast on radio, streaming TV, podcasts, and in print publications. I interview the world's most fascinating authors, all because I love a good book. This summer, I've partnered with WPS for BB's Summer Book Giveaway. We're giving away New York Times bestsellers and award-winning books, books that inspire me and I'm sure they'll inspire you. To be eligible to win a copy of Jesus Can Give You a New Life, answer this question. What is God's greatest gift to mankind? You'll find the answer in John 3.16 of the Bible. Send your response to the email at the bottom of the screen. I'm Valder Beebe and I'll see you for the next Beebe Summer Book Giveaway.